Howdy again everyone, and today I'm pretty excited to check out Canon's first pancake lens for their new mirrorless RF mount camera system, the RF 28mm f2.8 STM. It's a full frame lens at an affordable price of 300 US dollars, although its price in the UK of 350 pounds is a little steep. I'd like to thank Canon UK for loaning me this lens for a couple of weeks for evaluation, although as usual, this is a totally independent review. I was hoping to test it a while ago actually, but my summer vacation got in the way. 28mm on a full frame camera may not be the most enthralling and exciting focal length in the world, but it's undeniably very useful. It's a wide angle, but not so wide that the corners of your images begin to stretch out, so that leaves you with very neutral, natural looking wide angle images. F2.8 is just about bright enough also for shooting in darker situations, and if you get close enough to your subject, to give you a little background separation. If you shoot with an APS-C camera, then you'll get the full frame equivalent view of about 45mm, a bit tighter, obviously, for a more standard field of view, still really useful. The lens's build quality is very lovely here, I think, it sure looks good enough to me, and it's certainly lightweight at just 120 grams. The rear of the lens is metallic, although there's no weather ceiling to be seen here. The rest of the body is made of plastic, including the narrow focus ring, but actually feels quite tough. A switch on the side lets you change between auto and manual focus mode, as well as switching the focus ring into a customizable control ring for adjusting aperture, ISO, exposure compensation and so on. The lens's manual focus ring turns very smoothly and works with the focus motor very responsively. Unfortunately though, we do see a lot of focus breathing here. I'm pleased to say that the STM focus motor on this lens is a little better than on Canon's previous EF mount pancake lenses, slightly faster and considerably quieter. The autofocus system is averagely fast, but works very accurately, although it does still make a very quiet little whirring noise. The lens has a small 55mm filter thread size, and it does not come with a hood, although a very narrow one is available separately at an exorbitant price, I wouldn't bother with it myself. It does not feature image stabilisation. Overall, everything you want in here for a pancake lens really. Ok, let's look at image quality now. Firstly, on a full frame camera, my 45 megapixel Canon EOS R5. In camera corrections are turned on for this test. In the middle of the image at f2.8, we see brilliant sharpness, contrast is good. That sharpness continues across most of the image frame, but suddenly gets softer right in the very edges, as you can see perfectly in this test circle here. f4 is better, f5.6 is pretty sharp in the edges now, and f8 sees perfect sharpness from corner to corner. The lens stays this sharp down to f16, where softness creeps in due to diffraction. Still, a great performance here from such a wide angle little pancake lens. Let's see how it performs on APS-C now, on my EOS R7 camera with its very challenging 325 megapixel sensor. Once again, sharpness is just about perfect in the middle of the image. This time, the classic sweet spot advantage comes into play on an APS-C sensor, and those corners look excellent also, straight from f2.8. Nice. Stop down to f4 and those corners are now absolutely perfect. However, diffraction is always worse on a high resolution APS-C camera, and by the time you stop down to f11, the image is getting noticeably softer. Still, this is truly fabulous, what a sharp performance on such a very demanding camera. Ok, let's move on and take a look at distortion and vignetting now on a full frame camera by shooting it in RAW. We can see that, without automatic corrections, the image suffers from barrel distortion, but it's not as serious as I'd feared. Vignetting is heavy at f2.8, but stop down to f4 or f5.6 to see it reduced, but never truly going away. Still, nice to see Canon at least trying to optically correct distortion here, most other mirrorless lenses fare much worse than this. The lens's minimum focus distance is 23cm, which is not bad at all for shooting smaller subjects. The further good news is that sharpness remains pretty nice at f2.8, at close distances, and at f4 becomes excellent again. Let's see how the lens performs against bright light. We see a bit more flaring than I'd hoped, of a bright purple nature here, and a bit of glaring too. 
stop down to F4 as I do here and that flaring is reduced but doesn't go away. While we're working in the dark, let's take a look at coma levels. At f2.8, we're not really seeing much in the way of coma smearing on bright points of light, but there is just a little purple glaring around them. It remains at f4, but is gone at f5.6. If you want to see decent sun stars, then stop down to f11 or f16, and they pop out nicely. Next, Bokeh. No problems here, as you can see, even very difficult and busy backgrounds are rendered softly by the lens, so that's another nice little win. Finally, related to Bokeh comes longitudinal chromatic aberration. Even at f2.8, this is very low, and little colour fringing can be seen on Bokeh highlights. Stop down to f4, and what little there was has totally gone. Overall, well, what a fantastic lens this is, certainly one of the best pancakes Canon have ever cooked up, and its focal length is going to be really useful to you, whether you're shooting on full frame or APS-C, and I really was especially impressed by its performance on my APS-C camera. In every optical area, except for work against bright lights, the lens is a real winner, and I'm really impressed with Canon for getting such high optical quality out of such a small pancake design. Its price is reasonable too, especially considering its performance. It's certainly less expensive than the optically inferior Nikon 26mm pancake lens I recently tested. So, it goes without saying that this thing comes highly recommended. Thanks for watching everyone, I hope you enjoyed watching this review as much as I did making it, that was one fun lens to test. A huge thank you to my Patreon supporters, who really are making a big difference to me keeping this channel going. Supporters over there get all kinds of exclusive bonus content, including monthly videos and early access, so check out my Patreon page in the description below, and ciao for now.